This film is more secret squirrel than furtive ferret, thanks to years of research carried out in a bunker in where? North Korea? No, more like South End. We believe we have the technology to bring you dark secrets of the underworld. We call upon King of the Ferrets Simon Whitehead, who has been the brains and the money behind all this. Before he reveals all, he's got some proper work to do, checking the drop boxes on a fence line on this particular farm. The drop boxes is an ancient method of trapping rabbits, or a tip trap as some people call them. It's a box put in the ground with a trap door and a tunnel. And the tunnel goes through the rabbit fence, and so you're giving the rabbit a way from getting from A to B, or from B back to A, and then you put a counter lever on the trap door so when it goes on the plate, it doesn't move and it gets used to going through. And then when we want to harvest the rabbits, we take the counter lever or the weight off the trap door. And then every time the rabbit goes on there, it traps down into the nice box in the floor and then it springs back up. And got a little customer in there. So what you want to do is make sure he's dispatched straight away. Be wary of them. It's always important to check this is working again, and that's ready for tonight. With the drop boxes emptied, we can crack on with the main event, strapping cameras to ferrets and bolting rabbits to shotguns. We've been searching high and low for this, and it is a bit of a, a landmark in, in what I've been doing, because as long as I've been portraying and protecting ferret in, in the media, I've always wondered what it is like to be a ferret. You know, people have said, I smell like a ferret. I've got the ethics of a ferret. I'm even as feral as a ferret. Well, now I'm finally going to have the chance to see what it's like to be a Perkfield ferret. We've commissioned. <laughs> Come on, Simon, you have a reputation to maintain. Get a grip. We, or, or, or Darren, has come up with the answer to all my questions on what happens to a ferret under the ground. Does it fall asleep? Does it go and have a little word with a rabbit? Or is it just gonna run about like some people I know, try and look busy, but really not doing a lot? So today we're gonna to fit one of the ferrets with the unit. I can't say what it is called. It's just called the unit. <laughs> The one thing he is serious about is not allowing us to film the camera. Sorry about that. It has actually taken a long time to get usable images in what are horrible filming conditions. Firstly, it's pitch black. Then there's the soil, lots of it, which tends to stick to the lens. Then there's the operator who does like to shake, wobble and roll. Thankfully for us, some rabbits are camera shy and make a dash for it. That's when Simon is waiting for them with, of course, Gun cam. Some of them need two barrels. Simon maintains the first shot hit the tree. Nevertheless, unlike Elmer Fudd, the Shooting Times writer always gets his wabbit. He is, however, keen to stress that bolting rabbits to shotguns needs great care. He's seen many a capable gun see red and go fairly feral with the excitement of the bolt. Not only have you got the added distraction of ferrets running up and down all over the ground, you've got long periods of inactivity and then you've got a, a, a quick flurry of action. And rabbit shooting, I've found out over the years, has got the ability to turn the surface of shot into a gibbering wreck and an unsafe shot. So there's a, there's a few rules I always have for the few people that uh, are allowed to shoot over me ferrets. Is the, the person facing the rabbit holes is in charge of the ferrets. He tells anybody where they can and can't go. There's no wireless picture feed to the surface, so we are filming blind until we pop the memory card into the computer. We might as well have the camera to a mole. Did someone say mole? Well, here's a man who is also working to protect this newly seeded pasture. And it's another first for Field Sports Britain, a real life mole catcher. You've got to think like a mole to catch a mole, really. Uh, as you see, he's, he's built for digging. He's mainly feet. He's very small eyes, it lives underground, but he's got these huge feet for digging and scraping away the earth. And he's got lovely soft skin, which is non-directional, so he can turn around in a really small space. Most of the tunnels are only about the size of the mole, but he'll, he's able to turn around in that space without getting his, all the mud in his fur. 
So he's really built for the job. And all he does, he digs the tunnels, and they're basically worm traps. And the worms drop down in front of him, and he snaffles them up. I don't know if we can see with this one, this, his teeth. But he's got some pretty good gnashes on there, just for, for crunching, crunching worms. And he has to eat a heck of a lot for the size. For the size. There's not much value in a worm, so he spends all his time eating. But they work in a four-hour cycle. So it'd be four hours off, four hours eating, and that's basically his job. The moles are hung on a gibbet line. It used to be a common sight in the British countryside, showing the landowner just how many pests had been there, and for people like Paul, showing just how much money he's owed. Back to the rabbiting, the ferreting and the filming. We have a ferret-rabbit confrontation. It's not easy to make it out, so let me talk you through it. Ferret sees rabbit. We think he tries to get to the other side of it. There's a struggle. Then it goes dark because Ferret has hold of Rabbit and his face plus camera lens is close up against the Rabbit's body. He tries to drag it to the surface with a few shouts of protest whereby he gets a helping hand. Ferret and Rabbit are removed from hole and eventually prized apart and the miniature cameraman goes back in his box. Now ferreting at this time of year isn't for everyone as the rabbits do have young, but Simon's job is to clear the rabbits and a small rabbit will eventually be munching as much foliage as a big one. A rabbit, a rabbit, uh, this time of the year, this, this is the difference between out and out rabbit control and, and bolt and rabbits for sport and ferret for sport. The, uh, they're not going to grow up, so there's going to be a, there's going to be a gap in the uh, breeding program in this area, and with everything else that's going on around here, you know, in a matter of time, they'll, uh, you know, the rabbits will be next down to nothing. So yeah. The final ferret filming foray doesn't go to plan, and our cameraman goes first walkabout, then layabout. The ferret finder puts him at seven feet. Simon does not shy away from a dig. Some even say he enjoys it. You'd have to, especially when the little blighter moves as he breaks through. Eventually all are accounted for, and it is time for a refreshing cuppa. All the animals are back, we've got rabbits in the back. I'm now going to have my cup of tea and go home and have a nice clean up. So until we meet again, bye bye for now. It's been a fascinating day, but after that last performance, we understand that this ferret's career will now be in front of the crowds with Simon at the game fairs and not behind the camera.